will be the level software and hopefully whenever you have your lesson, our VP will be loading from here. So you don't have to have your lesson. Oh the zoom there as well. No, so what I'll do is I, ca I can put Zoom and also your YouTube, but will, this is better because this is YouTube directly. Yes. Zoom so takes from the quality. Yes, so I'll, eventually I'll take this quality and put your Zoom, RUT, Facebook. MashaAllah. Really? Okay, technology, technology. Here, inshallah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وموله Today is the 13th of the Qaeda 1445 21st of May 2024 and we're still in the episodes of how should we face the fitan and this is episode number 13 just like the ones before they were important and this one as well is very important because it's going to deal with the jihad matter. People these days, they don't know what is jihad and what is jihad and what is not jihad. So they don't know what is the jihad and they don't know what is jihad and what is not jihad. Just like the prayer has stipulated rules, conditions, prerequisites, pillars, same thing with the jihad. So understanding the fiqh of the jihad is very important. In the last time we were talking about the ways of making sure that our ummah is to be established and empowered in the land. And we arrived to the moment when we said that if the ummah needs, if the ummah wants to be in its triumph time to be victorious, then it has, she has to go, or this ummah has to go back to its religion. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, Ya ayyuha ladina amanu, in Allah yansurkum wa yuthabbit aqdamakum. O you who believe, if you champion Allah, Allah will champion you, and also He will affirm your feet, meaning that you will be victorious. Wala yansuranna Allahu ma yansuruh. Wala yansuranna Allahu ma yansuruh. Allah Azza wa will give the victory to the one who champion him, that means he follow his commands. And if this ummah come back to its deen, then the jihad will take place. And the jihad we're talking about here, the jihad in the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he says, the jihad has to have two things before it, the iman and the hijrah. No way the jihad can be done without the hijrah, immigration, to migrate. And the jihad and the hijrah can never be done except with the proper tawheed, proper imam. So if those people had upheld those three things and did what they're supposed to do, then those are the ones whom Allah Azza wa will give them his mercy. So in two verses we find in the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, amanu hajaru wa jahadu fi sabirillah. Those are the ones who had believed and then had migrated and they have made jihad. Look at the three links with each other. But first iman, then hijrah, then jihad. Rahmatullah. Those are the ones who hope and beg for the mercy of Allah. Wallahu ghafuru rahim. And Allah the oft merciful, the oft forgiving. Just like the Iman is compulsory upon everybody, also there is compulsory things about him, on on him, and that is the Hijrah. Not just one Hijrah, he has to have hij two Hijrah. Hijrah to Allah and Hijrah to his messenger. Hijrah to Allah to migrate to the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala by making his Ibadah with Tawheed, sincerity, with hope and fear in his heart, with Tawakkul upon Allah Azza wa Jal. And the Hijrah to the Messenger وسلم, is to obey his commands and to follow him and to believe what he says to you because of those things that you need to believe what the Prophet of Allah said to us about the end of the time from the things you need to believe how to make the jihad 
So Allah's Messenger, he said, فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Whom his migration is to Allah and his Messenger, then definitely his migration is to Allah and his Messenger. وَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى دُنْيَا يُصِيبُهَا أَوْ إِمْرَأَةٌ يَنْكِحُهَا فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى مَهَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِ And if your hijrah is actually to the dunya matters, to a woman to marry then, this your hijrah is to the intention that you have done. So the jihad in Sabirillah, it will not be fulfilled except if the ummah gone back to its religion. You have to start with the deen and tawheed. And the jihad is basically the ultimate. Is the top, imagine there's a camel, the top point of the camel is the hump. So the peak of the religion is jihad. That means once you have fulfilled your obligations, and once you have kept away from what Allah told you to keep away from, and once you have sold yourself for the sake of Allah, once you have the immigration, or the migrated from your sins, and migrated from your shaitan, and migrated from yourself, those things if it's been in place, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the jihad possible for you. So the Prophet sallam, he said to Mu'ad ibn Jabal, Ala ukhbiruka bi ra'sil amr wa amudihi wa dhirwati sanami. Shall I inform you of the head of the matter and the pillar of the matter and the hump of the matter, the peak? He said, as for the head of the matter is Islam, Tawheed. And as the pillars of the prayer, and as for the hump, the, the dirwa is the jihad. So if you don't really do tawheed, if you don't do the salah, then how can you go and talk about the peak, which is the jihad? So here the jihad is the ultimate, is the cream, is the product of your iman and tawheed and salah. So because of the jihad is the peak, then you'll find that those who are going to gain it are the ones who are on the top, not anybody. The ones who had sold themselves for the sake of Allah had migrated away from the dunya. So that's why the Prophet ﷺ, he was on the top. And the companions also with him, they were on top. Because they have made jihad. First jihad they made against their whims and desire, against the shaitan, against themselves. They have made the jihad in all sorts of ways. The jihad, the da'wah, the jihad with the fight, the jihad with the hujjah, establishing the hujjah. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ and his companions deserved for that jihad. Not anybody can go to that peak. So let's just go about the jihad levels here, ranks, bismillah. As we have said, because of the jihad is jihad, the enemies, the outsiders, to repel them. But this is a branch from the jihad of the person to himself. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, المسلم من سلم المسلمون من يده ولسانه The Muslim, the real one, whom the Muslims are safe against his tongue and against his hand. والمهاجر من هجر ما نهى الله عنه And the real immigrant is the one who migrated away from his what? From his what Allah had prohibited upon him. That is the one who is the done the real migration. So if we know that the jihad, if the person himself desires and whims, then it is basically, it is the first thing that you need to do before you start jihad and fighting against the outside enemy. Because if you don't do this jihad, which is against yourself, against your sins, against your whims and desire, against your dunya, then you're not going to be possible to meet the jihad for the outsiders. This is like training. When the person wants to train his muscles, he goes to the gym, he does not start with the heavy weight. He starts with the light weight. Start with the light weight, then after that you go to the you know, the big weight. No way you can go just jump to the big weight. You can't really leave the dunya when you are hooked to it once the jihad call is on. It's not going to be possible. It's not going to be uh, understandable. It's not going to be as well uh, uh, imagined. No way. So then also on top of the whims and the desire, there's another enemy, which is the shaitan. And the shaitan is the root of everything. So when you fight the enemies, when you fight and you fight yourself and whims and desire, you also need to fight the shaitan. So fighting the shaitan is the foundation of fighting whims and desire and making jihad against the enemies, the outsiders. Inna shaitan lakum adu, fattakhiduhu aduwa. Shaitan is for you an enemy, so take him as an enemy. So these are the three enemies now. Shaitan, whims and desire, and the outsiders. And the outsiders can be as well, hypocrites, can be disbelievers, all of that. So we got now three uh, things who are need to be focused upon to fight them and to make sure that we are trained 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he will give us the victory. طيب, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the victory according to your iman. And the help that Allah is going to give you is according to how much you are closer to him. So when Allah, when he said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُدَافِعُ عَنْ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Allah defends the people who are believers, then how much he will defend? How strong he will defend the Almighty? Is it full or partial? It depends upon how much iman that you have. The more closer to Allah, the more support you're going to get from the Almighty Azza wa Jal. So this is what we said before, Al-Udda Al-Imaniyya. Iman preparation. I need to prepare myself iman-wise. Otherwise, I will never be able to complete or accomplish the triumph and the nasr and the victory which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had promised me. Let me just put Ahmed here. Ahmed, just spotlight me, please, if I put your co-host. Jazakallah khair. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had commanded us to fight in his sake, the proper fight. وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِ Proper fight. And also Allah, he commanded us to fear him. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ Fear Allah, the proper taqwa. And the proper taqwa here is to obey him, not to disobey him. And to mention him or remember him without forgetting him. And to thank him and not to deny his favors. This is the proper uh, giving or the taqwa, the, the proper haqqa tuqati. Fahaqqu jihad and the haqqu jihad is that the person he would find, fight himself, fight his whims and desires, so his heart settles, and he would be fully to Allah Azza wa Jal. All of him is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is not fighting for the sake of a group, the sake of a land, the sake of a people. Also, he would fight his shaitan by be- denying him, by not believing his promises, and disobeying his commands. When you have this jihad of yourself and the jihad of the shaitan, then you will have straight away the route to make the jihad which is against the outside enemies. Allah's Messenger, he said, جَاهِدُ الْمُشْرِكِينَ بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ وَأَلْسِنَتِكُمْ Fight the kuffar, the mushrikeen, the polytheists, with your wealth, with yourself, and with your tongue. So, after this, Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he says, so the jihad is of four levels. After this introduction, jihad al-nafs, jihad al-shaytan, wa jihad al-a'da' kuffar wa munafiqeen. Jihad al-nafs, jihad al-shaytan, fighting against shaytan. Jihad al-nafs, whims and desire. Jihad al-kuffar, which is the disbelievers, is in two types as well, kuffar and munafiqeen. So let's just go back now, one by one. Jihad al-nafs, fighting your whims and desire. You fight yourself in order to fulfill the following thing, which is in Surah Al-Asr. Wal-Asr, inna al-insana la fi khusr. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ Those are the four things when you make the jihad against yourself. So here, the first one, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا So you have to carry yourself to learn the deen. Because there is no way for you to succeed until you learn the deen. There is no way for you to taste the happiness that Allah promised you without the deen. So the second one is وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ so you have to implement what you have learned. So if you learn something, implement it. So you need to make sure that it is not just knowledge, you have to have amal, ilmun wa amal. Third one, وَتَوَاصَوْ bilhaq, And they call for this, they teach this deen. So it's not just for you to learn only and also implement, you have to teach others, which is a da'wah ila Allah. So you will teach other people, you call the people to it. The fourth wing, Fourth thing, as-sabr. To be patient. Tawasal bil haqqi wa tawasal bil sabr. So you're going to be uh, afflicted in this da'wah. You're going to be tested. So you're going to be patient regarding the harm of the people. They're going to come to you definitely. And you're going to be bearing all of those for the sake of Allah. If you have perfected those four things, then you are making the proper first level of jihad and the jihad against the whims and desire. Then you'll become from those people called Rabbaniyun. You're a Rabbani. For the Salaf scholars had said that the scholar will never be a Rabbani until he had, number one, learnt. Number two, 
implemented what he learned. Number three, he called for it. And number four, he's been patient regarding all of those three things so that he will be, inshallah, alim rabbani. As the second level of jihad, we said the jihad against the shaitan. The jihad of shaitan is of two types. Jihad al shahawat or jihad al shubuhat Jihad al shubuhat which is the whims and desires, the doubtful matters. Sorry, the words are shubuhat the doubtful matters. So you're fighting those doubtful matters that crept into the deen. So this is the one that makes you doubtful about the deen. So this is first fight against the shaitan. So shubuhat, and this is the most dangerous because the shubuhat is more dear to the shaitan than the shahawat, which is the second one. And that is the whims and desire. So anything that the shaitan puts into yourself regarding dunya, regarding sinning against Allah, you are also fighting. Those two can be fought in the following way. The jihad the shubuhat, to fight the shaitan when he throws his shubuhat in doubtful matters, is actually by certainty. So you are certain about your deen. You are learning how to tackle these shubuhat. This learning will make you have yaqeen. The second one to fight the shaitan against the wounds and desire, you need patience. Because the dunya is sweet and those things uh, like fornication and drinking and all of that might come to the person and attack him. So he needs to be patient. With these two, then he'll become an imam. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said in Surah Al Sajda, that we have made from those Bani Israel a imma and when and the imma and the guiding with our guidance, that means the call to the deen, Lemma Sabaru, when they are patient. Patient against what? Whims and desires. And then Wakanu bi ayatina yuqinun. And they were having yaqeen certainty certainty regarding our verses. Yaqeen is to fight the shubuhat. So sabr is to fight the shahawat. So shahawat we be patient. Shubuhat, we have to have knowledge in order to push it away. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, he had said, if you want to have the imamah, leadership in the deen, then you have to get it with sabr and yaqeen, patience and certainty. Sabr will push away the desires and the yaqeen will push away all these doubtful matters. Now we're coming to the third level of jihad, which is jihad al-kuffar wal munafiqeen. This is jihad of the disbelievers, and we're going to go with, with it as well, the hypocrites. Hypocrites are the most dangerous disease. Those, this jihad in kuf, against the kuffar and those who are hypocrites, in four ways you could do them. The tongue. So I'm jihad with the tongue, and that is more to the hypocrites. Why? Because they got doubtful matter they throw. So you are with, the, with your knowledge, you, de, you know, dismantle their shubuha, their doubtful matter. Secondly, with the soul, with yourself. And that is for the kuffar, and that is fighting. And thirdly, with the wealth. So you fight them as well, with the wealth. So you've got now the, the, the tongue, and you've got the uh, wealth, and then you've got the self, and the fourth one, which is the root of all of them, in the heart. is very important. So when it comes to the kuffar, I have to fight him with the four, but mostly with the self, the self edges forward. As for the, this, the hypocrites, because they throw the jubuat, the one which is, pops up uh, out of all these four is the hujjah, to establish the hujjah against those people who throw uh, the uh, doubtful matters. Do you know which one is more precious in the eye of the deen? Is it the jihad in the nafs or the jihad of the Lisan, which is the tongue. Which one? Well, see, if you know that jihad of the nafs, anybody can do it. Regardless how weak he is, you can just give him a gun and shoot. But the jihad, which is of the tongue, and that is jihad to repel all these doubtful matters, only the people of knowledge can do it. So this is the difference between the two. The jihad with the, you know, you train a person to shoot and he will shoot. But that thing needs scholars. You need to learn your deen in order to make that jihad. As for the jihad against the tyrant leaders, or the people who are mubtadi'ah, or the people who are corrupted, rebellious, okay, then the Prophet of Allah he told us, with the hand, 
and with the tongue and with the heart. Top one is what? Hand. Can't do it? Tongue. Can't do it? But the heart is always with there. So when they say, with the hand, hand and what? Heart. With the tongue, tongue and what? Heart. Heart is to be there as always. But the last one, I can't do the hand, I can't do the tongue, then with the heart. So now when we see here how many levels of jihad, we've got 13 with all these categories. 13 types of jihad. Prophet ﷺ, he said, Man mata wa lam yaghzu wa lam yuhadith nafsahu bi ghawz mata ala shu'batin min al He, from the Muslims, who dies and he did not make or engage himself into a fight, into jihad, or he did not talk to himself, if the door of jihad is open, I will be ready, then if he dies, he will die upon a branch of hypocrisy. So after listening to all of that, what do we say to those people whom they all the time talk about the jihad, but you look at them, they are far away from the deen. All they just say, jihad. They go on top of the pulpit, jihad. They write articles, they put jihad. Two days ago I've been talking to this person, he's arguing with me about jihad. All he just says, Scott, this, the leaders in such and such country, they don't do jihad, they don't really, and they doom these people who are making resistance, and also they, uh, they condemn those protests and all of that. SubhanAllah. What did these things do for you? The so-called resistance, and the so-called protest, and the so-called you accusing those leaders of the Muslims countries that they are, you know, they're not just hypocrites, they are from the Jews and they are Zionists and they are huh? just all of that. Subhanallah. All is good is just making, uh, you know, passing testimonies of betrayal. You're a betrayer. You're letting them down. Allah al-Musta'an. You've heard now all of this where we say fiqh al-jihad, just like we have fiqh of the prayer. Fiqh of the prayer, what you need to learn the wudu and how to perform the prayer, prerequisites and conditions and pillars. Jihad has the same thing, Akhwani. It's not just chanting jihad, jihad. It's not. It's not just making some homemade, you know, firework and then you say that I'm sending rockets. It's not. It's not like that. So this jihad has got rules and conditions as we're going to see. From the conditions of the jihad, number one, al-imam. Leader. We have to have a leader to fight behind him. We can't just like, oh, just go and fight. Each small, I call them bandits, huh? Isabat. I got his leader. Another bandit got leader. Another bandit got leader. What's this? You have to have wali al amr, shart al awwal. So the Prophet he said, al imam wa junna. Imam is a shield, protection. You qatilu min wara'ih. You fight behind him. So the qital fight has to be with an imam. You can't just. Have a qital like this, it will be otherwise not religious qital. Not according to the Quran and the Sunnah. Second one, a distinguished raya, banner. What are we fighting for? Is it for the sake of putting the word of Allah to be the uppermost? Or is it because of the sake of such and such partisan? Oqsimu billah and akuna mukhlisan to such and such partisan. Not to Allah and His Messenger. To such and such jama'ah, to such and such group. And the Prophet he said, Man qutila tahta rayatin ummiyya. If a person had been killed under a banner which is not, which is not clear, ummiyya, which is clear, blind, yad'u asabiyya. And he's calling for, basically, is to be like a group or a partisan. Yansuru asabiyya. He is championing a particular group, particular partisan. Fakitlatuhu jahili. If he dies, he's not going to die as a shaheed. Prophet ﷺ, he said, Man kharaja min al -ta He who had left the obedience of the leaders or the Muslims. Regardless whether they're taran or not taran. Regardless whether you think that they helped, you know, the Palestinians or did not help the Palestinians. Regardless. So if you, had le if you had taken yourself away from the obedience of your leader and you left the jama'ah and you died, you died upon jahiliyyah. And he who dies under a Banner, which is not clear, is the Ponjahiliya. Who is the one who fights for the sake of a race, or sake of a group, is dies, he dies upon Jahiliya. A person who from my ummah, Prophet said, Kharaja min ummati ala ummati. And he took the sword from my ummah against my ummah. So he's from my ummah, but he's actually calling my ummah. 
He kills the righteous and the non-righteous. He does not stop himself from fighting anyone. He doesn't care. He might kill this person, but it doesn't matter. I've seen one of them, he said, Oh, my brother had killed the, pre- the, 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 um, the minister in Egypt at the time of uh, Anwar Sadat. He said, he is the one. And that's, uh, he had just put a bomb underneath this car. Why? Because he is supposed, he's with the leader. So what about the one who is driving the car? He said, يَبْعَثُونَ عَلَى نِيَّاتِهِمْ Blood for them like this. They will be sent according to the intention. So he killed the driver because he's driving the minister. And the, the minister is being killed because he's got working for the leader. Look at that. So for him as well, no problem even to kill the wife of the driver and the children of the No problem. If you die with him, kill them. Because on the day of resurrection, they're going to be sent according to their intention. Look at this. How cheap is the blood? Inshallah, our topic next week is going to be about the blood. How important is the blood? Shedding the blood just like this. The shedding the blood of the Muslim just like they slaughtering the chicken, ya khwani. Allah. Here the brains are gone. This is, the, this is the time where you could see with your own eyes and could hear with your own ears what the Prophet ﷺ told us about. Brains have evaporated. There's no brain. You're talking to a person who is just being brainwashed totally by the media. Totally by the media. He doesn't understand. So he's not doing anything to Palestine. And he's not letting those brothers who are teaching the people except by labeling them the arbitrators and all of this. Allahu Musta'an. So you have to have a banner. Otherwise, so this person coming out from my ummah, killing my ummah, he does not care about killing the righteous or the non-righteous, the believer or the one who is not pious. This is the one who he said, Prophet Sallallahu is not from me. فَلَيْسَ minni. Third condition. So we said, Imam, banner, clear banner. Third condition is to have the udda, as we have said. Udda, which is we're talking about the materialistic. Udda basharia or udda askariya. That means manpower and also weapons. وَأَعِدُّ لَهُمْ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ مِنْ And prepare for those enemies, whatever you can, from the quwa. What is the quwa? أَلَا إِنَّ الْقُوَّةَ الرَّمِي Prophet the quwa is mean the shooting. That means tanks, planes, all of that. You have to prepare for that. Otherwise, you are a hypocrite. You say that you're making jihad without preparation. Because Allah has said, if they wanted qital, لا عدوا له عدتا. They will be prepared for it. But they did not want the qital. Real qital. Second one is al udda al bashariya Manpower. Look at the enemies. Compared to the number of those who are so-called al muqawama resistance. Just compare the Allah Azza wa Jal had made it, as I said before the last week, and I said, Allah, alhamdulillah, made it easier on us that if our army is less than half of the enemy's army, we don't have to fight. Now, there is no even comparison these days. You're talking about few tens, if it says hundreds, few tens or hundreds, facing hundreds of thousands. There's no comparison. And the is called jihad. I call it this is suicide. I call this that you're putting the people's huh, life in jeopardy just for the sake of your own satisfaction. And the mujahid fights with his face showing, not like a bandit covering his face and just his eyes showing. This is not the fight of people who are mujahideen. Muhammad ibn Maslam, he killed and he said, I am Muhammad ibn Maslam. And he went to the Prophet. Assassinated, fulfilled his mission, and he went there. It's not hiding. I don't know who they are. Who are these people? Anybody can put this and I am such and such Abu, whatever his name. I wonder, this is not jihad. But people are not waking up. That's the problem. You are in the masjid, mashallah, you come to the class, you learn. So, so many. How much your percentage of you? 1% maybe? <laughs> 1% and the 99% they are drunk that's the word for it they are drunk they're just here doing nothing apart from just talking and labeling this to be as a person who's a traitor person who's a kafir person who's a zionist that's all they say that's all their job but 
They have the dunya, mashallah. Those leaders whom you talk, at least they facilitated the route, okay, for the help to Palestine. Because without them, without Jordan facilitating the help to Palestine, how are they going to get the help? How? But they never stop condemning. They want just the people to hate their leaders. When the people hate their leaders, what's going to happen? Chaos. They're going to kill the leader, and still they haven't learned a lesson. They haven't learned the lesson from Iraq, from Syria, from Libya, from Tunisia. They don't, don't learn the lesson. When are they going to learn the lesson? When? When? When is it going to be they wake up and learn the lesson? When? I don't want to be in my country, Jordan, to be like what happened in Syria. I don't want to. I live happily there, alhamdulillah. And I'm able to send money through the, the people to Palestine. I'm helping. But you, you, what do you think? The Jordanian, mashallah, they got this power. They are like an ant compared to an elephant. They haven't got the power. Each person, Allah Azza wa Jalla had burdened him according to his ability. Each person can help according to what he's capable of. What do you think they're going to, be to put, jeopardize the Jordanian army and let them go and fight and they're going to be killed? Because you know it's not just them who are fighting Israel, the whole world are fighting with them. The whole world. The people can do nothing, their people are powerless. So, Yahwani, stop. You know, this emotion is a killing emotion. It's like reminding of a person who loves his son so much and he hugged him to the extent that he killed him. In the hug that really pressed him and he died. That emotion we don't want to. We want the emotion which is control. Wake up, Yahwani. Don't listen to the media. Inshallah, this message will travel to those people who are listening and to start waking up and reading between the lines. This is all of it being set up. How many Muslims do you want to be killed until you stop your nonsense to say, don't dare talk about the Muqawama? How many people, how many people do you want? You want to wipe the whole of the city of Gaza until you wake up? What? You say Muqawama. They throw something and then you hide underneath the, huh? And then in the tunnel. And those people in the, in the, in the buildings, boom, with a plane, boom, as a jihad. I don't understand these people. How do they come? How? How do they think? Allah understands. So, this is Shurut al-Jihad. Imam, Raya, and I'dad. And I'dad al-Maddi is preceded by I'dad what? Ma'nawi. I'dad al-Imani. To prepare as well. Are these prepared? Do they? Wallahi, some of them, they don't know how to pray properly. Wallah, and I mean saying Allah. What is the goal from fighting? It's just fighting for the sake of fighting. What are the goals, the precious goals that Allah Azza wa Jal want us to attain and to gain from this jihad in the sake of Allah? It has to be something because we are sacrificing blood and human beings. It can't just be for nothing. So some of the people, unfortunately, they understand that jihad is... Terrorism. It's not terrorism, Akhi. That terrorism of yours, you're putting bombs in here, that's not jihad. Some of the people, they think is, uh, you know, exploding here, an explosion here, killing here, assassinating here, this is the jihad. Some of them, they rob the money here, and they raid the money here, and they think this is jihad. This is not the jihad, Akhwari. Some of the people even, um, <laughs> this is the other side extreme, deny the jihad. Totally, completely deny the jihad. Some of the people that think the jihad is just a jihad with the sword, with the gun. They forget there's a jihad with the tongue. Before that as well, to jihad against the doubtful matters. So, al-jihad, in our, for, the, for the sake of Allah, in our deen, is the jihad which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with. And Imam al-Tahawi, he says in Aqeelat Ahl al-Sunnati wal Jama'ah, ولا نرى الصيف على أحد من أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. We don't really see it is allowed for you to raise up the sword against any person from the Ummah of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم except إلا من وجب عليه الصيف except the person who deserves it. A bandit, brigandry. ونرى الخروج على إمتنا ولا أمرنا وإن جارو. We don't see it is allowed as well. That is to make a coup against our imams, our leaders, even if they to be tyrant. ونرى دعوة عليهم. We don't make supplication against them. Tell me, these Muslims, do they make supplication for them or against them? Tell me. 
Have you ever seen a, a person say, may Allah give victory to such and such? All they have said, Muhammad bin Salman, King Abdullah. They just, yeah, he just make a dua for them that Allah fix it. We're not saying they are 100%. You are 100%, the one who's saying it. You're not even 50%. Make a dua. This is what the, this is what the scholars said. We don't supplicate against him. We don't pull our hand from their pledge. Listen, we see that the obedience of them is from the obedience of the Almighty Azza wa Jal. Fariza. Compulsory. Just like you saw last Fariza, your obedience to the king, never mind. Never mind talking about him sickly, which is me sick from you. This is you have to obey them. That's a farida. We don't want to be coyous because we can't find the enemies except with the Imam, the Khalifa, with a leader. Not groups of bandits here and there. How many groups have we got in Palestine? Jihad and Mujahid. Each one has got his own leader. Do you think the jihadi would listen to the Hamasi? Or the Hamasi listen to Fatawi? They don't listen to each other. Each one has got his own Khalifa. <laughs> So we need to have an imam to fight behind him. Subhanallah. Qal, ma lam ya'mur bi ma'asih. As long as they don't command you to do a sin, don't pray. We don't listen to them. Don't fast. We don't listen to them. Who said that from the scholars, sorry, from the leaders of the Muslims? Don't pray and don't. Who said that? Who said to us, you have to dance in the club. You have to drink wine. Tell me which leader had said that. I haven't seen it. Even the most, the most talented one, they say, and that is Qaddafi. He didn't command me to do a sin. He allows you for the masajid, but you take masajid for your headquarters to plot against him. That's why he's attacking you. We call Allah Azza wa for to make them righteous. We follow the sunnah of the jama'a. And we keep away from being odd or being scattered and being split and being different. Hajj and jihad, they are going forward. That means established. Behind the leaders. Our leaders will make the hajj. Our leaders will make the jihad. Whether they're righteous or unrighteous. We do know that some of the leaders are very unrighteous. But still we have to obey them. As long as they don't ask us to do to do a ma'asiyah, a sin. Until the hour. La yutiluhuma shay wa la yukisuhuma. There is there's nothing would they make them to be invalid. This is to be there all the time. That's a rule, Dikhwari. And the Quran and the Sunnah told us a number of times that the jihad in the sake of Allah, it has been done, or it's been derived, it's been imposed upon this ummah for a number of very precious goals. Goal number one, so that the word of Allah to be the uppermost. لِتَكُونَ كَلِمَةُ اللَّهِ هِيَ الْعُلْيَا and the word of the disbelievers to be the one below. In order for the Allah Azza to be worshipped alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, The ones who believe, they fight in the sake of Allah. The ones who are disbelievers, they fight for the sake of Taghut. Taghut, anything but Islam. Kufr. فَقَاتِلُوا أَوْلِيَاءَ الشَّيْطَانِ Fight the ones who are helpers of the shaitan. Inna kayda shaitani kana da'ifa. Verily the plot of the shaitan is to be weak. وَقَاتِلُوهُمْ حَتَّى لَتَكُونَ فِتْنَةً And fight them until there is no fitna. وَيَكُونَ الدِّينُ كُلُّهُ لِلَّهِ And the religion to be all of it to Allah. Also Allah Jalil said, إِلَّا تَنْصُرُوهُ فَقَدْ نَصَرَهُ اللَّهِ If you don't champion him, the Prophet ﷺ, then Allah championed him. إِذْ أَخْرَجَهُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا ثَانِيَ اثْنَيْنَ they have exiled them. They had chased them up when he was one of the two. Him and Abu Bakr. They were in the cave. When he was saying to his friend, his companion, The Prophet is saying to Abu Bakr, Don't be uh, scared. Don't be in sorrow or grief. He was scared on the Prophet, Abu Bakr. Not for scared for himself. Because if he was scared for himself, he will never travel with the head of the state whom the bounty is on him. He will never travel with him. Why should he? He will travel on his own. He traveled with the Prophet, he knows that number one target for the people of Quraysh is the Prophet of Allah. You don't want to be troubled with him. Be troubled with him, so he was fearing for the sake of the life of the Prophet of Allah. So the Prophet of Allah said, لا تحزن إن الله Allah is with us. فأنزل الله سكينته عليه. 
Allah put his tranquility upon him. And he had helped him with soldiers. You don't see them. And he made the word of the disbelievers to be the one below, the one low. And always the word of Allah is to be the uppermost. Allah, the Almighty, all wise. Abu Musa al Ash'ari, he said, the man came to the Prophet, he said, Messenger of Allah. A man fighting for the woo booty. A man fighting for to be mentioned with the people. And a man is fighting to see how he's going to be elevated from courageous. So he's after the dunya. So this person fighting for the wubuti. Another person fighting to be, you know, for showing off. Another person fighting to elevate himself in terms of ranks and all of that. All of it for the dunya. So the, who is in the sabirillah? Who is in the sake of Allah? Prophet Allah, he said, Man qatal, he who fought. لِتَكُونَ كَلِمَةُ اللَّهِ يَلْعُلِيَدْ For the word of Allah to be the uppermost, he is the one who is in the sake of Allah. Others, they're not. that means all of those, they're not in the sake of Allah. A man came to the Prophet وسلم, he said, Messenger of Allah, if a man had fought, يَلْتَمِسُ الْأَجْرَ وَالذِّكْرِ He's seeking al-ajr, reward from Allah, wal-dhikr from the dunya. So his, his intention is double. Number one is to satisfy Allah. He wants a reward from Allah. Azza. Number two, but he wants the people to mention him, how courageous he is. In. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, لا شيء له. There's nothing for him. Messenger of Allah. This person fought for the sake of Allah, for the reward. And at the same time, he wants to be remembered. Mentioned. Is there anything for him? Nothing for him. Three times he said it until he said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَقْبَلُ مِنَ الْعَمَلِ إِلَّا مَا كَانَ خَالِصًا وَابْتُغِيَ بِهِ وَجْهُ That is, Allah will not accept from the actions of the deeds of the person, except what is what? sincere to Allah and you sought whom the pleasure of Allah alone and nobody else <coughs> Prophet he said Man ghaza fi he who had fought in the sake of Allah illa he just intended to find some wubuti that's what his intention he's going to get what he had intended that's the first goal so to, what is that to make the word of Allah the uppermost the word of the disbelievers to be the lowermost and also Allah to be worshipped alone on this earth. Second precious goal from the jihad is to expel or to repel or to defect, to also defend the Muslims against those who are, uh, they are, they are attacking, the attackers. So the ones who are attacking the Muslim lands and the Muslims, we want to make a stop for them. Fight in the sake of Allah, the ones who fight. But don't transgress. Look at that. Inna Allah la yuhibu al Allah does not like the transgressors. The third goal and precious goal is that is to punish those who are disbelievers and to give the triumph and the good feeling in the hearts of the believers. Qatiluhum yu'adhibuhum Allahu bi'aydikum wa yukhzihim wa yansurkum alayhim wa yu'a. وَيَشْفِي صُدُورَ قَوْمٍ قَوْمٍ مُؤْمِنِينَ وَيُذْهِمْ غَيْضَ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَيَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَى مَيْهِ شَاءٍ To the end of the verses. So here, قَاتِلُوهُمْ Fight them. Kufar. يُعَذِّبُهُمُ اللَّهُ بِعَيْدِيكُمْ Allah will punish them with your own hands. As in the war, in the battle. وَيُخْزِهِمْ On the day of resurrection, on the day of resurrection, He will disgrace them. خِزِي وَيَنْصُرْكُمْ عَلَيْهِمْ He will make you victorious upon them. وَيَشْفِي صُدُورَ قَوْمٍ مُؤْمِنِينَ And he will make your heart to be happy and settled for this victory. Fourth precious goal from the jihad is the test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How much you're going to be patient to face the enemies and then to win the martyrdom in the sake of Allah. Allah he said, If you've been touched by harm, then don't worry, the other side, they've got the same thing. You had wounds and injuries, the other ones got wounds and injury. And the days we will give it to, you know, between the people. That means one winning sometimes and one is defeating. So that Allah knows who the ones who believed. And He takes from you witnesses. Allah does not love those who are ظالمون, oppressors. Shrikun, kuffar. And all that Allah says, test the believers, and He wipes out all the shirk and the kufr. Do you think they're going to enter Jannah? And Allah will not test you to know who is going to be making jihad. And the ones who are patient. So you're not going to be 
entering Jannah without a test. So the ones who are fighting for the sake of Allah with its proper conditions, with its proper fiqh and rules, Allah Azza wa giving them a glad tiding in his book and the Prophet of Allah is giving them a glad tiding in his sunnah. Number one, a life which is happy. So those who are fighting for that, for this, in the proper conditions, they're going to have a happy life. Where? In the grave. In the barzakh. Allah's Messenger, he said, and Allah Azza wa he said, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتًا Do not believe or think that those people who died for the sake of Allah in the battle as shaheed as to be dead. بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ وَزَقُونَ They are alive. With the Lord, Allah is giving them that their souls hovering paradise while their bodies is in the grave. So those people, they've been honored. And that means there's a grave punishment for those who are not honored, the ones who are bad. So there is a delight and there is a punishment in the grave. And we believe in the punishment of the grave. Just like we believe as well in the light of the grave. So here, the martyrs or the shay and mujahid, whether it's martyr or not, mujahid, jihad, he will have the good life in the grave. Secondly, he has been promised with forgiveness and mercy. If you die for the sake of Allah, being killed for the sake of Allah, or you die for the sake of Allah, then you'll have forgiveness and you'll have mercy. Better than all that what you accumulate from the dunya. Thirdly, all your sins will be expiated. Allah Jalla said, "فَالَّذِينَ هَاجَرُوا وَأُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ وَأُوذُوا فِي سَبِيلِهِ وَقَاتَلُوا وَقُتِلُوا لَوْ كَفِرَنَّ عَنْهُمْ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ." Those are the ones who had made immigration, and they've been kicked out, exiled from their homeland, and they've been harmed in my sake, and they fought and they were killed. لَوْ كَفِرَنَّ عَنْهُمْ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ. I will expiate their sins. Fourthly, Allah Jalla promised them with a mighty reward. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَهَاجَرُوا وَجَاهَدُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ أَعْظَمُ دَرَجَةٍ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْفَائِزُونَ Those are the ones who believed and immigrated and made jihad. They are in the sake of Allah, in the, with themselves and their wealth. بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ أَعْظَمُ دَرَجَةٍ They are the, having the biggest reward with Allah Azza wa Jal. قَالْ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْفَائِزُونَ And they are the ones who are successful. Okay? They are the ones Successful. That will be reign forever. Allah has got the mighty reward. Also, Allah Jalla said, The one who fights for the sake of Allah, he's to be killed or he's to be the winner. We will give him a mighty reward. The fifth one is the reward is Allah's love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love them. In Allah yuhibbu alladhina yuqatiluna fi sabilihi saffa ka'annahum bunyanu mansur. Allah loves the ones who fight for the sake of Allah. Saffa, one line, one room, like well-built fortresses. Sixthly or sixth benefit from the jihad, from, from sixth reward, sorry, for the mujahideen and the one who makes jihad is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised him with this dunya, in this dunya, success and abundance. And in the akhirah, the same thing. قال الله عز وجل لكن الرسول والذين آمنوا معه جاهدوا بأموالهم وأنفسهم Messenger and the ones who were with him they have fought with themselves and their wealth وأولئك لهم الخيرات they have all types of goodness وأولئك هم مفلحون and those that are successful also from the rewards for these people who are making jihad that Allah عز وجل promised them that they're going to be guided والذين قاء أو قتلوا في سبيل الله فلن يضل أعمالهم the ones who have been fighting for the sake of Allah, Allah will not waste and neg- waste or null their deeds. Sayahdihim wa yuslihu ba'lahum. So it's a promise. Allah will guide them and He will rectify them. Also, that Allah will give them salvation from the hellfire and they will be su- successful and to win the paradise. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, o you who believe, hal adulukum ala tijaratin tunjikum min adhabin alim. Shall I inform you about a trade? which will save you from a severe punishment. تؤمنون بالله ورسوله وتجاهدون في سبيل الله بأموالكم وأنفسكم to believe in Allah and His Messenger and to fight in the sake of Allah with your wealth and with yourself. ذلكم خير لكم كنت تعلمون This is better for you if you know best. يغفر لكم ذنوبكم ويدخلكم جنات تجري تحتير الحار ومساكر طيبة في جنات عدن He will forgive your sins and He will make it to enter paradise and the which rivers will flow and He will give you good, uh, good places to live in like the mansions mansions in Jannati Ad, Garden of Eden, 
ذلك الفوز العظيم this is the supreme success وأخرى تحبونها another one which is what نصر من الله وفتح قريب to have the victory and to have the فتح القريب that means you will be having the reward of conquering and taking the land back and which is a very close drawing close وبشر المؤمنين we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the proper jihad and grant us as well the shahad and say sabir Allah azza wa jal but as I said all this is to show us that jihad is not just a word like this a jihad is got just like the salah there are conditions prerequisites pillars that have things that you need to learn Allah ta'ala and inshallah we'll be talking about the importance of the blood uh, next week there's a cat here mashallah does she, does she know the cat? No, Subhanallah. She's rubbing everybody. She wants uh, everybody to give her something. <laughs> well done. Any questions regarding what we heard? We've got another 10 minutes, I think. <coughs> Fadl. Uh, Sheikh, there is a, uh, some video circulated online. What's your advice to people, some Muslim brothers, who are some of them uh, unintentionally uh, sharing videos of people warning against going to Hajj? Allahumma that the government of Saudi I'm going to repeat the question. Somebody was talking to me that day about this. I was really shocked. This video circulating saying don't make Hajj this season to Saudi Arabia because this money is going to go to Al Saud, <laughs> to King Muhammad bin Salman or his father. So, and you are helping the enemies. I don't know these people. Either one of the two. Either ignorant, stupid, and that's most, most of them. Or the other one, who are being brainwashed. The third one, they are the disbelievers who know the haqq. So they are brainwashed, or well, idiots, or they are a'udhu billah. There is a big, massive attack in social media upon the Muslim countries. Especially Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, big massive attack. Let me just state facts here. Palestine, if you don't know it, and Gaza especially, has been attacked more than once, but this is the one most devastating. There's Gaza 1 and Gaza 2 and Gaza 3, if you don't know. If you don't know your history, then shut up, don't talk. Gaza 1 demolished. Lots of, not like now, but a lot of demolition. I want to ask, who had rebelled Gaza? Is it Iran? I'm asking. Is it Iran? Is it Hezbollah? Hezbollah? Why would you just tell me? Is it you, the ones who was talk talking? Maybe you gave thousands. Saudi Arabia. Number one country. Gaza number two. Demolished again. Who had helped? Who gave the money? Iran? No. The European game, pennies. The European game, pennies, nothing. Saudi Arabia. And now thirdly, it's going to be Saudi Arabia. It's the one who's going to be paying the bill. And still these people have no shame. Man nas, Who does not thank the people, does not thank Allah. We're not saying Saudi Arabia is the state of Muhammad at that time. But they're a Muslim country. They've got Tawheed. They've got wrong things, yes. They're celebrating that. Was it called that day in February? Halloween, Halloween is Halloween, no, no, no. Huh? no, no, no. Valentine's Day, they're celebrating Halloween. Yeah, how many people are celebrating Halloween? <laughs> how many people are celebrating this? This is Ummah there, you know how many, the population of Saudi Arabia? Before you do Satanism, you know how many people live there? So when you look at Mecca, those people, MashaAllah. Look at Kaab Madinah, MashaAllah. We're not saying it is perfect, but all that in the bin, SubhanAllah. And because of Iran had sent a firecracker, firework, uh, they deliberately on top of Jordan, and Jordan had intercepted it. Oh, you see, look, they are helping. All of them, they work together. They work together. This is under the table. All of these enemies, they work together, Ikhwani. They want to target Ahl Sunnah, us. Subhanallah. Can't Iran go and throw from Lebanon? Closer to them, yeah. Go Hezbollah on the border. Why not just from there? Why? From there? Why? Why? Because we know, alhamdulillah, in Jordan we are settled. They want to corrupt us. They want us to make us against the, the coup and make a coup. We're not going to do that. 
going to listen to you. We have people, alhamdulillah, mashallah, learned people. You do what you like. Jump up and down. You can't really put a split amongst us, inshallah. Allah azza wa jalikshif. Shubuhati, ya Rab. Ya Allah. Allah wa ta'ala kafi nuhurihim. Wa na'udhu kamshurihim. They're really dangerous people. Very dangerous people. So this person I was talking to him that day. He's saying, look, Jordan had put down two rockets. I said to him, do you believe Iran is going to send rockets to Iran? Are you, are, you, uh, are you in your mind? Really? Are you think that this... So what is it the two rockets going to do? Going to put... Khalas Palestine going to surrender? Is that how simple man we can? Allahu al-Musta. Don't you think this is all of it just to, you know, hide the media against, you know, the leaders and all. This is all of it being planned, Yaqwani. Go, go back to this 7th of October. You know that in our Palestine country, they say this following saying, if a bird want to fly from Gaza towards Israel, so-called, before it thinks, never mind moves, before it thinks to fly there, it will be shot down. Do you understand that? It will be, <laughs> this is everything being orchestrated, Yahweh. To be left there alone, just, just go revile it. Street is empty, they could do what they like, and they killed a number of soldiers, and everything there, and nothing happened. Movie. It's a movie. We've got lots of movies we have. Because Indian movies, we've got Pakistani movies, we've got lots of movies. We've got the movie of 9-11, we've got the movie of 7-7, we've got the movie of 6-6, we've got the movie of 5-5, movie, movie. <laughs> lots of movies, Ikhwani. Mark is full of movies. And people, they don't think. Emotional being happened. Allah al-Musta'an. Everything is a movie, Yaqwani. And people that believe. You're not going to get your land back. You're not going to get the victory until you fulfill what you've been talking about for the last three, four weeks. You're not. That's an equation. Universal law. In tansurullah, yansurukum. Or yuthabbit aqdamakum. So that means if you, if lan tansurullah, lan yansurukum. Wan yuthabbit aqdamakum. Simple. Universal law. But no, 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 no. We are going to win because we are under oppression. And Allah, because of our, you know, our miskeen, we've been oppressed, Allah will give us the victory. Who said that? Who said that? Where is this in the Quran and the Sunnah? you making jihad, you are the one who is attacking. And when he said, who started the thing? They said, you see, if they didn't start, they will start. Look, look at this. Look at the way they argue with you. If they didn't do the 710, that they already will attack them. There are still, still the West Bank is still occupied. Yeah, well, the so-called you know, Palestine or the uh, West Bank under Abbas Mahmoud. Hama. But still the people can shop and around in safety. But they're taking land slowly, slowly. Okay, let them take land slowly, slowly. But they're killing here. They're destroying here. All of this was an alibi for them to come in. They gave him the alibi. 100%. Ya Allah. We say to them, you're wrong. To say that about your Muslim country. To say not to make hajj. Because the hajj, the money goes to uh, the people against Palestine. No, it's going to Palestinians. Whether you like it or not. What time is there then? 58. Jazak Allah khair. Got for another five minutes. Isn't that someone preventing somebody to do an obligatory action? Isn't that, isn't that a serious thing to tell somebody not to It is. Is it, is it are you blocking to do something? They don't, they don't care. They already had labeled you as a munafiq. They have labeled you as a kafir. You cooperate with a kuffar. This is nothing. They've already chucked you in hellfire. You're a betrayer. You're a treacherer. They call me mumzanist. I'm a munafiq. How? What, what, do I receive money from Netanyahu or something? Allah al We're saving you from the idiotness. You're an idiot. And you've been brainwashed. Yes, it's a great sin to stop this faridah of hajj to tell the people not to go and make hajj because of your foolishness. Wake up! Naam. In the question, what's the Is it for the beginner of the Talib al to look at the Shubuhat and start to refute? No. 
طالب العلم he is busy to gain علم not to go and learn shubuhat because he might be hooked to the shubuhat scholars like Abu Ayyub al-Sikhtiyani scholar whenever a person comes from the Ahl Bid'ah one word he does like this not even half a word away I don't want you scholar he doesn't want to hear him half a word because he might pollute him just and they were asking why you just listen to him he said I, I'm scared if you can't give me a shubha he will hook to me and I will never be able to take it away how about the student knowledge I would say okay brother student knowledge is beginner don't read media don't read those, those don't be hyped, hyped up and pumped up with these emotions listen to the scholars they're the scholars يخوان. not to the youth no all the scholars Sheikh Al-Albani, Sheikh Ibn Baz, Sheikh Ibn Uthameen, they were at this time when, the, when, the, when Gaza took place before. And their words until today are still here. They're still there. Still there. People forgot now. Allah Mustafa. Now, as I answer the question, inshallah. Tayyip Khair, inshallah. Fadal Ya Zuhra, last question. You know the Prophet وسلم, he used to strike his bed before sleeping. Do we have to do that as well? Strike his bed? Yeah, maybe to get rid of it. No, no, like this, not strike his bed. No, no, no. <laughs> strike the bed. <laughs> Dust it. No. It's like this. No, you don't have to do you don't have to do unless you are in a place where you could have it. But you know. I sometimes do like this because my mobile is hiding inside. <laughs> <laughs> but the Prophet ﷺ is in a place, you know, there, you remember all these things depends upon where you live. Like for example, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, put the fire off before you sleep. The fire is going to kill you. But now we have safety for stoves and we have electric as well lights. We don't, we don't have to put them off. Because that one, there's a reason why it's off, because it will kill you. And this one now, it doesn't kill you. Same thing here, when you have, mashallah, living in a place where there is no such thing as going to be a snake. Have you ever seen a snake go into a, a bedroom of a person in Britain, in England? And even the snakes here, they're not poisonous. Okay? So, something like this, you don't have to do that. Okay? Because if I do that, I'm going to have a problem with my wife, because she made it nice. And <laughs> <laughs> Nah, Allah Ta'ala. So it's got a reason why. Tayyip, Fadal Ya Ahmed. A person went to the gold shop to buy jewelry. They gave him the price in cash. They said, if you want to pay by card, there's an additional fee because the bank will charge us. Is that allowed? So the question is that if you buy the gold in cash, then this is going to be such and such price. And if you buy it through the card, Debit card, yes? One go, all of it, yes? Yeah. Right. And there's a fee. There's no problem. Because these companies, they take a fee. But I, I'm pretty sure the debit card, they don't take fee. Maybe a credit card. It's credit card, yes, but I don't think it's a debit card. So I would say, if it's credit card, you should not be buying with the credit cards. Credit cards, if one, there's a riba in it. Regardless of what you do, there is a, there is a one there condition that if you don't pay in time there will be some sort of payment you have to pay even you don't really pay that payment because mashallah you are on time but signing on that contract is not correct don't have a credit card unless you are essential you need it for something important they can't do it without it um, so if it's debit card and like this i don't think there's a uh, fee but if the debit card takes fee it's no problem inshallah Yes, I'm sorry. I think this, this person said his manager imposes a fee for all cards. If you use any card, they want to charge you extra. Advantage. 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 Advantage.
question of yours is like it's using debit card but it's only the manager of the store is imposing a fee. It's in this country it's the other way around. If you pay cash you pay more. If you pay card it's less isn't it? That's what it is. So for example if you buy from a car giant, if you buy cash you have to pay for every such and such hundred another because they, they're going to have the staff taking this money, banking it, which is allowed. So they're taking more money when it's cash than the car, but this is the opposite. Okay, so uh, maybe they don't want to make people to pay into this card because maybe this guy he doesn't want to have banking. As long as it is, it doesn't matter the gold or not gold. The gold is doesn't make a difference. Okay, let's say he's buying microphones. Okay, so if he's saying that if you pay the money, which is on the currency, that is the money. If you pay my bank, because I have to go to the bank and have to go and get it out, then I'm going to impose a fee for that bank. And that fee is one fee. It's not according to how much you put. So it's like I'm, I'm imposing five pounds. Whether you are paying 10 pounds, you're paying 10,000 pounds. I'm imposing a fee of five pounds because it's going to cost me a car to go and get it to the bank or whatever. Then it's no problem, inshallah. Tafaddal ya shammam. Uh, some of the masajid here, they tend to propagate protesting and want people to go to protesting, saying that this is the main way that we can help uh, Palestine. However, whenever we warn against it, they say that these imams have graduated from big institutions such as Medina or Umm al uh, What's the best way to still prove to them that it's still not right for us to go, even if these big imams are saying that these are the best, that this is the best way to? Don't engage with them. It's not upon you to guide them. Busy yourself with yourself. In the time of fitna, you have to minimize the talk to everybody. Because you're talking to people, as I said, brainwashed. You're going to end up fighting. You're going to end up with a very hot argument. You're losing your friendship. You might lose also yourself by saying things which you're going to regret later on. And when I had this argument with this person, my heart didn't really help me. I was not comfortable. And even I said to myself, I shouldn't have done that because this person is just being washed. There's no usage. All if you used to do dua, make them dua. So these people that don't understand till today, protest. The biggest protest was against the war against Iraq. In this country, we had so many millions from the non-Muslims. <coughs> not the Muslims, the non-Muslims. Did, did the Iraqi war happen, uh, finish, it stop? No. Already the army is there. You, speak, you jump up and down if you like. We're going to do what we want to do. I mean, people don't understand this. But the protest is, you know, it's, I, I call it like the pill. You know, they want to have the pill, relax. Uh, they're having the pill. Huh? Yeah, entertainment, yeah, they're having the pill. So uh, one day I, I went to uh, take away in Slough. And that was upon uh, on the night of the protest that they took in London, took place in London. And it was just about 10 o'clock. So these people coming back. And there was uh, brothers with the beards. But they got, uh, and there's sisters as well, mashallah. And uh, with hijab, but tight clothes. And got Palestine all over the place. And, okay. and they're having, you know, burgers. Sisters with sisters and brothers and brothers. But, you know, on the tables. I'm sure there will be chit chats later on. Um, problem is that, after, I didn't know what was happening, so I went out and I found this brother 
He's got a cigarette. What is this, brother? He said, brother, protesting against against Israel. So, you know, he's, he's sinning against Allah. And he's protesting against... Protest we were to support our brothers from Palestine. I said, La hawla wa la illa Person came out from them with his got megaphone, you know, the mega horn outside. And it was 10 o'clock now, 10 o'clock in that neighborhood, and everybody sleep. So he came out and he started using it for the sake of just using it. It's just entertainment. And he's got this bunch of kids with him, with him called him brainwashed. Like what? Nothing. What did you achieve? Nothing. But it's a day out. <laughs> it's a day out. You plan your day out? Protest. <laughs> Allah understand. Wake up, ya khwani. We need to go back to our regime. Hatta tarji'u ila dinikum. Do we believe in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? You're not going to have this humiliation lifted until you go back to your religion. ذل لا أنزعه عنكم ذل humiliation it will not be lifted حتى ترجع إلى دينكم أستقل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يرفع الذل عن أمة المسلمين وأن يكون الله لأهلنا في غزة جزاكم الله خيرا وأحسن الله إليكم